training some back, doing some lat work. Starting out with some rows. Gonna do some pull-ups and stuff too. Go no hands with these guys. Kinda nice. Or you can grab on the strap a little bit and pull. Try to pull with the lats, pull the shoulder down towards the ground. We got Chris Bohr working with us today? Uh -huh. Stretching his shoulder out a little bit, trying to fix my lat. It's all, it's all packed together. It's fantastic. guys seen me doing some of the knees over toes stuff and really this can be valuable for any mobility stuff you take two bands like this I mean this is just specific to this setup but you might not necessarily need two bands you might only need one but just for this particular setup we got here go like this wham and sometimes you know, we had Ben Patrick here and he showed us the knees over toes stuff. He's a skinny guy, you know. He's a skinny little guy. And skinny little guys don't know the pain of being a big guy. So, I'll show you something that can be really easy just to offload some of that. Some of those LBs we got. Because we're SHWs, right? And he's a, he's a lightweight. So now I'm hooked in here. I got my backpack on, my anti-gravity backpack. And as I go to take a step, the anti-gravity backpack is going to start to take over. And normally what I would do if I didn't have this on is I would probably kind of lean forward and I'd probably do some sort of lunge like that. But because I have this extra harness on me that's going to help take care of me, I can confidently stretch this hip. I can stay with upright posture. I could stack my shoulders above my hips and I can just drive forward on the knee and then we can get some good knee over toe action and I can feel that sensation right there and now I can look a little bit like what Ben Patrick's able to do. And it feels safe, like I feel fine doing that. And I can stay in control of it. Even for people that just aren't flexible in general, when you go to go down and stretch your toes towards your toes, you'll find it easier if there's something that is allowing you to just take off a little bit of weight. Another example of that, real simple, would be if I have something to block my stretching with, I can go like this and I can get my legs real straight. And then I can go and try to work my forearms down to here. But without this here, my body doesn't want to stretch that way because all the muscles are so tense. As soon as I feel all that weight, my, butt, my hamstrings are like, nope, don't go anywhere else. Don't go any further than there, smelly. But by having something to kind of hold on to, now I can concentrate on it and I can kind of work my way down. And over time, I can start to get into positions where I start to move better. I can even go one leg, bend this knee back a little bit, get my hand in here, and start to kind of toggle. Start to be able to do some stuff like that. Do this on this side. Kind of work out some of those kinks. <clears throat> and then even without the use of that now, because I already moved myself into some of those positions, I can kind of get underneath the toes, and I can start to hit the ground a little bit. I can start to end up in some better positions. So 
Might want to give that a shot. Hooking up the backpack. Look at my brother's got the backpack on now. What are you it's doing? Like gravity backpack. Like a lunch? Just go as far forward into your knee as you can. Yep. That's fine. Are you going to be off balance? On balance, off balance, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Shoulders stacked above the hips, so pull the shoulders back. Not necessarily back like that, but have your motion be more initiated from your leg. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there you go. That's awesome. Good. And then try to breathe and try to not to, try not to have anything that is, re is allowing your face to register like that you're in pain. Like go short of that so you don't feel it that way. I don't want my face registered. Well, it's not that you don't want your face to register, it's just that you don't want to push into position that is forcing your face to do that, or at least feel that way. These are some straps that we're working on over here. Always working on creating new stuff. Working pretty good, I like the way that feels. You can go with like a pistol grip. Pistol grip's nice because you kind of have a loose grip with the fingers. And you're able to pull and concentrate on the muscles that you're trying to wipe. Rather than just squeezing the cramp at it with the forearms. Here's another decent exercise. It can help y'all with some mobility stuff is to just step on a band. So if you have a hard time with your squat depth, you can go like this and you step on the band. You can leave it there, yeah. So you can kind of be like this and just go to the side here and see how high my knee is compared to where my hip is. This is below parallel. This would be like a below parallel squat. So I can just gently take myself through this range. This doesn't hurt at all. It'd be nice if I could balance a little better so I could hold on to something. Let's hold on to this, I guess. It'd be fine. But you can kind of work yourself through these ranges of motion and get the groin to open up. And if you can activate the hip flexor, if you can flex upward, you can control this all through your own range of motion rather than just having the band kind of towing you around. But think about it, throughout the day, you're never in a below parallel situation, whether you're getting out of your car or whether you're taking a shit or whatever it is you're doing. You're not as low as you think you are. And we, our body, you know, responds well to these ranges of motion. And these can be restorative and they can be really healthy, just healthy movement, good healthy movement. So while it may look silly or whatever, or it's like not, you know, crazy heavy or anything like that, it's something that you can do in between some of the other crap that you're doing. Just to get the movement down, just to move around. If you're someone that hurt a hamstring or anything like that, it's another great reason to do a movement like that. I got a new trick. I actually probably did about 30 of these already, so maybe a little bit more. But I've gotten a little bit better at pull-ups. What's it like working out with your baby brother all these after all these years? It's the best thing ever. In the beginning, I was a guy that knew everything and had all the secrets. And then uh, I transferred over to him. Then he went to Westside Barbell and he just took off like this. So now I get all the secrets from him because he's learned all the secrets. And then he went, he went to bodybuilding. He sort of done it all, met everybody, talked to everybody. And so have I, so we collaborate a lot of the ideas in training and eating and sort of everything and we kind of both really feed off each other i think hopefully at least and it's it's a great experience to be able to have been with smelly since day one 
since he was 14 years old and first started training. So I think he benched 315 in like ninth grade. And so we, <laughs> we knew he had a lot of potential. Um, he was always like in the basement, just training, always getting ready, you know, for uh, football or for whatever. And then what's really cool about lifting is like lifting lasts forever. No matter how good you are at football, unless you're Tom Brady, you're not gonna be playing until you're 45. So lifting's one thing you can do well, well beyond 45 and keep going. I mean, I'm 48, still lifting. Lifting probably harder than I've lifted in, in my 20s and 30s because I was injured that whole time and I couldn't figure it out. So now here we are. doing these rows you want to press your body into the pad try not to get too much into a lot of this stuff a lot of this action try not to really have a lot of it sit into your arms pistol grip it a little bit where the these three fingers are on there but they're just kind of like lifting straps almost and you're kind of here like this let the arm kind of get a little long. Let the bicep be loose. Even as you go to pull, you're not pulling with the bicep like this. You're going to push your shoulder blade down towards the ground and initiate kind of being right here like this. So when you do this, my end range of motion is only like right about there. Where I think a lot of people think they need to have their elbow really travel really far past the body. And that can be a way to do it. There's nothing wrong with training that way. But I think that this works a little bit better in terms of getting full lat activation because the lats are activated right here from the start by initiating that shoulder down towards the ground. And you can even kind of lean to the side and you will feel that shit. Of time when people are doing rows they really want to turn the body a lot and you can actually just think about driving this the working shoulder as you go to finish the exercise rather than driving it backwards you actually want to keep it forward or at least keep it locked in there's a big old red wall over there I'm trying to keep it locked into that red wall and I'm not twisting I'm not gonna be twisting towards this back wall I'm gonna shift the shoulder and keep it here. Because when I do that, it puts all the tension on the lat. You don't need to, you know, work out like a maniac. Uh, you don't need to yell and scream and get all crazy. Some of that might be fun sometimes, and that might be the way that you choose to train here and there. But I hear bodybuilders and powerlifters, you know, talking about like you have to do it this way, you have to do it that way. And what I've learned over a long period of time is I had a certain style, a certain way that I did things, but I'd also be willing to admit that you can do it your own way. 
So find what works for you. I don't come in here every day and go absolutely ballistic. Today is more of like a trial day, like just trying things out, moving things around, seeing what feels good. You haven't seen anything I'm doing today be real heavy or real crazy. So it doesn't have to always be a crazy, crazy workout. Do one last set. Maybe you get a better idea of how them lats be working. If I go with a naked, naked uh, bro. Put both my legs up here. I'm gonna try to arch a little bit more. Feeling that. Just trying to finish it out there. I felt really good. Last thing I'm gonna do is some lat pull downs. I'll be all done. What's it like for you to work out with your big brother? My brother in some ways is like a hero to me in a lot of, a lot of actually different aspects. Um, he's somebody that, you know, uh, he follows his hopes and dreams um, with everything he's got. And uh, even when it doesn't really work out, he still follows it which most people don't do. It's really hard to kind of sit in the saddle and do that for a long time, uh, especially when things don't really maybe work out quite the way you expected or the way you wanted to. Um, and he's also come back from a lot. He's come back from knee surgeries as a kid, hip replacements, uh, drug and alcohol addictions. And he's still here and he's still training with me, so. Pretty inspiring, pretty awesome. That's it for today. Got some good back work in. Strength is never a weakness. Weakness never strength. Catch you guys later.